What comes into your mind if you hear of animal experiments? Probably rabbits forced to smoke, or hamsters with cosmetic products being dripped into their eyes. All in order to prove the alleged harmlessness of those products for mankind and their usefulness for medical progress. There are fewer pictures of it in the press these days, even though the tests are continuing, and if they're mentioned at all, they are represented as doing no harm to the animals. Yet each year millions of animals suffer and die in the laboratories, and their numbers are increasing. All this is always justified by pointing out the future benefits for people. But if you take a closer look at these animal experiments, then their benefits look doubtful because animals are not humans. In spite of the close relationship, people and animals differ from each other. They have different metabolisms and show different reactions to many substances. In humans, thalidomide causes malformations, but not in the usual experimental animals. The painkiller paracetamol is okay with people, but poison for cats. Arsenic, which is poisonous for people, does no harm to sheep. Substances like varnishes, dyes, bitumen, silicon, industrial lubricants or fuels are pumped by tubes into the stomachs of rats for months, yet there's little evidence of the effects these substances might have on man. The supposed comparability has long been refuted, and yet, again and again, new animal experiments are being conducted in the same way. Animals do not suffer from diseases of civilization, which are caused by man's unhealthy lifestyle. Consequently, each tested animal must first be made sick. Diabetes in animals is caused by destroying the cells of the pancreas with poison. Heart attacks are caused by constriction of the coronary arteries. Arteriosclerosis is caused by sending electric impulses through the arteries. The guts of mice are perforated to trigger a painful peritonitis with sepsis. In addition, there are purpose-made animals who are being bred in a way that they suffer from certain diseases or conditions or to serve as a stock of spare organ parts. But an imitation of symptoms has nothing to do with human diseases and their causes. The treatment of those animals who have been sickened artificially is often even successful, but it does not mean that the treatment actually helps man, even if it previously worked in a million mice with cancer. Medicines that were successful in animal experiments fail in more than 90% of later clinical trials on people because they either do not work or they have too many side effects. Experiments that concern the mind and personal feelings are particularly absurd. Animals cannot talk. Yet, often using painful measures, they're made to react in a way that's claimed to be a symptom of a certain mental illness. For example, rats are subjected to electric shocks to make them feel desperate in order to study depression. Such assumptions that cannot be founded on anything often have outcomes that are completely contradictory. Researchers then cheerfully conclude that they need more tests of the same pattern to get to the bottom of these contradictions. Often, the so-called results are completely trivial. Hamsters are killed during hibernation to prove that the period of rest saves the nerve tissue from Alzheimer's. Alcohol is injected into the abdomen of baby rats and later they undergo behavioural tests. The conclusion is that alcohol is not good for children and youngsters. Guinea pigs have to endure noise trauma in order to prove that noise causes hearing impairment. The life of animals in the laboratories is short and full of pain. They are fed with too little or too much food. They are prevented from moving. They are scalded with boiling water or infected with germs. And they are operated and crippled. Monkeys' heads are fixated and they only get water as long as they don't struggle. Rats are starved until their weight is less than half of their normal weight to study the effects of anorexia. Electric shocks force mice to run until they break down in utter exhaustion. 
Currently, no researcher has to justify himself for inflicting pain on animals. His studies are only evaluated by being published in scientific journals and by obtaining further research funds. The approving authorities only check the compliance of formalities, but not whether the approach of research makes sense. In addition, a whole branch of industry profits from breeding animals for testing purposes, from keeping them in cages, and from discarding them in the end. All this is defended with an alleged benefit for mankind, even when the only aim is making profit. But our aim should be medicine-free from animal experiments, where research on the causes for diseases and on the prevention of diseases is in the foreground. In contrast to animal experimentation, contemporary research methods that use human cell cultures or microchips provide results which are significant for mankind. Medical progress is important, but animal experiments are the wrong way.